with um with the Lakers, and I want to I want to talk about this real quick. Can we just acknowledge this that the Lakers' downfall is not at Russell Westbrook's fault? I just want to put this mm. out there. Anyone who talks shit about the Lakers and puts Russell Westbrook in the same sentence needs to have a hard look at themselves because yes, I I do agree. The Rockets were better when Westbrook was on the bench. That's just a fact. I mean, in the playoffs, when Westbrook in took the a playoffs, seat, yeah. he was he was so <clears> bad. <throat> I kind of just like like I begin to think series. he disrupted everything they had going. How bad Westbrook was for the Rockets. I mean, they should have just not even played him at that point. For the Wizards, it was mm-hmm. the Wizards. It was just I mean, it's the Wizards. I I don't really want to yeah. give too much crap on Westbrook's part, but the Lakers, dude, it's not Westbrook's fault. Um, I'm going to be the first one to say that if nah. I'm the Lakers, I am, I think their general manager, if he's not the worst general manager in the league, like I know some people will say, oh, it's all LeBron <clears> and this <throat> and that. It was the general managers. He could, he looked at players like Isaiah Hartenstein and Jock Landau. He looked at them and said, nah, I think, 35-year-old DeAndre Jordan who can't hop off the ground is a better player than both of them. Now, Hartenstein mm. is... I think Hartenstein's at this point. He's starting some games on the Clippers, I think. I don't even know, but he's getting good minutes and he's a really yeah. solid player. He's developed into a nice role player, actually. The inability for the Lakers general manager to scout these players is so concerning. And I think it's... Is Rob Palinka? is he still their general manager? Is that his name? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He he needs to be. He needs to go, like hundred <laughs> percent. I am the only good move he's done is bring Stanley Johnson in. Like that's the best move he's yeah. done. The best move. Mm. The amount of things you have LeBron James on your team, and the best move you've done is bring in Stanley Johnson. Stanley Johnson, yeah. Like there are so many centers right now. Like he's had. What are we? We're like two or three months into the NBA season, right? He has had two or three months to scout all of these centers in the Euro League and the NBL, etc. He knows how bad their centers are right now. There's a Jock Landale and an Isaiah Hartenstein playing in the Euro League right now that he could get in like that. And he continually yeah. keeps DeAndre Jordan and Dwight Howard on the team. Why is DeAndre mm. Jordan? How does he still have a roster spot? Please oh, I, answer I, this. Nobody knows that question. It's purely just because he's a name and because he's friends with a lot of guys around the league and he just has that respect. It's nothing to do with him as a player because he's probably the worst player in the NBA right now. Am I out of line for saying that the Lakers general nah. manager is the worst in the league? Bring up another name and I will tell you why that they're better than the Lakers general manager. And the Lakers fans agree with me. He needs to yeah, go. Look, I, what is he doing? I don't think it's entirely his fault because there is more pressure on him going into this off uh, into last off season. Sorry to mm. make moves with a thirty six year old LeBron and a yeah. um, paper mache Anthony Davis <laughs> on a team that won a uh, won a title two years ago. Mm-hmm. There's big expectations, and of course. I know LeBron isn't the general manager, but LeBron has to He's, tick off yeah. on everything because we know how much power he holds. And, um, yeah, I don't feel like it's entirely his fault, but, of course, just like everybody else involved in that organisation, he has to hold some part of the blame yeah. because it's it's a problem that has so many layers that you can't boil it down to one person. People are saying that it's Westbrook. It's not Westbrook, even though Westbrook does play his part. But it's... They it's need to whole... bring in a general manager who's not going to listen to LeBron. They need to bring a general manager who has a plan for this team. And I would like to put my hand up for this application <laughs> personally. Get me in the spot of Lakers GM. I will, yeah. I will build you a new Yeah, I'll go all right as Lakers GM. I'd, no I'd make them in no time. <laughs> I've done a it in 2K. Like... My belt, I'm, I'm sorted. <laughs> so much experience right there. Yeah. I just, I yeah. don't. I genuinely don't understand how in three months the best free agent this guy has brought in <clears throat> is Stanley Johnson. Like, yeah. how? Why? I oh. also have no cap space. I don't. Just on the just on the Westbrook thing with um, 
Houston, obviously, before the shutdown, he was absolutely electric for a couple of months there and then yeah, yeah, yeah. got to the playoffs, tore his, quad, tore his quad, they rushed him back, all oh, well, that sort of shit, ended horribly, got traded, went to Washington. They started off the year horribly. I remember they missed, like, they had 10 games or something postponed or something ridiculous at the start of the year. And then he brings them back, him and Bill bring yeah. them back and they make the playoffs and, you know, lose in the first round. But whatever, it's Washington. Nobody had expectations for them anyway. <laughs> um, and this year has been disappointing, but I feel like he's starting to turn that corner like he does every year. On the topic of the Rockets, you've heard the have you heard the Rockets Westbrook thing? How they were mm. willing to trade John Wall to the Lakers for Westbrook in a first. <clears throat> you hear about that? That's you, that's absolutely stupid for the Lakers. The Lakers said they're not gonna do it because they don't want to have to give up a first, but they're shopping Westbrook like as we speak, and that's another massive L <clears throat> if you're the Lakers GM. Like just fire this guy immediately because Westbrook is clearly not the issue. If you added, you remember Danny Green a couple years ago when people were giving him shit, but he had some of the best perimeter defense in the league and would still shoot 36% from three. Yeah. These players aren't hard to find. All you need to do is insert one of them into the starting lineup. And then LeBron as a shooter and a guy he can rely on defensively. And for God's sake, so... When it comes to Frank Vogel, I have this issue where, and I don't know if this is the Lakers GM or Vogel, but how is a defensive-minded coach who the only thing he was good at is defense defense, playing a small ball team with Stanley Johnson at the five? Mm. What happened to JaVale, they having these tall centers and then having AD at the four? Why did Mm. that idea just get chucked up and thrown in the bin. They did it with Montrose Harrell. They brought him in um, and yeah. Marcus Gasol. What happened to this interior defensive center? Like, if I was the Lakers, all you need to do is bring in a younger JaVel McGee and a younger Danny Green, and you've got an elite starting five again. You just got to hope that AD and LeBron stay healthy, right? Yeah. It's, it's really not that hard. Those two players are much better than... A Carmelo Anthony who does not defend at all. And when he shoots threes, does not look at the ring. I mean, you know, literally doesn't look. He looks at the ground. <laughs> and plays. It's, it's hilarious. And a dude like Austin Reeves. Like, how hard is it to get two better players than them? Like, free agency can't come quick enough for the Lakers. If you were the Lakers, up the yeah. top of your head, do you what, do you... what do you think about Frank Vogel? Does Frank Vogel need to be fired or... Is this more on the general manager's side? Because he's clearly proven he had a game plan and a scheme when he had JaVale at the center and Danny Green at the two. Whose fault is this? And is it is it any on the coach? Yeah, look, I feel like it's, like I said before, it's there's got to go, the blame has to go to everybody involved. And Vogel has run some really fucking dumb lineups this year. Like he played... At the start of the year, he was playing DeAndre Jordan and Dwight Howard in the same same lineup as Anthony Davis and Russell Westbrook. It doesn't take a fucking genius to figure that that's not going to work, right? Because both of those centers are washed and number two, three guys on the court that can't shoot. LeBron's your best shooter on the court. That's never going to work. But again, don't think it's entirely his fault. This roster is obviously poorly constructed from top to bottom. The top pieces are talented, but they don't fit. They have no depth. The bottom pieces are fucking DeAndre Jordan. Don't need to say anything. And they they just don't give effort. They don't really do anything. Mm. They're just sort of humming along and they're staying at 500 with two of the arguably top five players in the NBA and a guy who was still an all-star caliber player up until this season. And I feel like if he does his mid-season turnaround like he does every year, the perception on him will change again like it does every year. Mm. Do you know why I don't think that will happen with Westbrook this year? Did you watch the Hornets Mm. game? I reckon he could have had about 15 assists. I reckon he Mm. could have had about 15 assists. He probably finished with like eight, but he could have had like 15 or 20 if Kamala Anthony actually looked at the ring when he shot. Um, mm. and players started hitting. 
like consistently. Like this team, it's not hard to fix. Like no. seriously, if if you are all in with LeBron and AD, if you have to give up four first round picks in the off season to bring in a bunch of solid role players, you're doing it. Mm. Because you've got players on the team now where you can still match contracts. Like next year, I think they'll still have a mid-level exception. So there's a player you can bring in on $7 million. He'll do a job. You got Horton Tucker is on $10 million. You trade him with a first round pick or two to bring in a dude like Miles Turner. How perfect would he be for the Lakers, you know? Mm. So yeah, it's really not <laughs> that hard. You just got to get a new GM. Like get rid of the guy that's there right now. And then if you find a better coach than Vogel, maybe explore it. But I wouldn't fire Vogel because, I mean, God, look at the team he has. It is. Yeah, exactly. When you give a defensive-minded coach DeAndre Jordan as his center, <clears throat> there's going to be yeah. issues, right? Yeah, look, I don't, um, I don't think firing Vogel is necessarily the answer if they get a... Um, get along in the season, AD comes back, they gel together because they didn't play that much and I think their defense will be okay. I don't think it'll be great like it was in the last two seasons, but I think it'll be just fine. Um, the offense is still an issue, obviously. The only, I don't know the answers for them, but the one thing that I'm dead set that they should do is trade Horton Tucker because he just has no purpose on this team at the moment. There's no place for him, and if he's the only person that has any sort of trade value that can improve them, he just has to be moved. I I completely agree.